Now, before I start, I want to be sure all the feds are seated comfortably. No? Okay, good. I don't want them in here. Well, this is a little, hopefully uh, you can see this. <laughs> it's just a little toy. I've got noisy neighbors. You know what it's like. And this was a little kit I had gotten from a place in New Hampshire. What it is, it emits a shockwave at 130 decibels. <laughs> yes, it does work. <laughs> a few times, as they can attest, and I zap myself with it once. Not on purpose. Alcohol was involved, but it works. So some of the basics on it. Uh, it's a very simple unit to build, which I shouldn't even be mentioning that because God only knows what's going to happen now. But uh, it emits, in a, there's an audible tone range between 5 and 20 kilohertz. And the basics of it, just simple hardware, is you can see the housing. It's just PVC pipe. You know, gotten anywhere. And the way it works is that you'll have, uh, there's a timer that's connected uh, as an A-stable free-running multivibrator. Get your minds back. Yeah. <laughs> With externally controlled frequencies. So that's on the back, these two knobs. One is for the frequency, the other one is for the sweep control. Now, there's a resistor that uh, selects the range limit and a capacitor along with other resistors on the board itself, and that's what actually selects the frequency range. Now, when the wave itself goes out, it's a square wave output of the timer, and it's resistively coupled to a power amp, and the ground is DC biased through resonator choke. The square wave is uh, then fed through a transducer in series with a resonating coil, uh, parallel combo. The action between the transducer, tuning capacitor, and inductance makes a sinusoidal wave pattern that peaks at around 25 kilohertz. Now, this wave has peak-to-peak -peak voltage higher than the original square wave. The transducer will use all those voltages to make the higher sound pressure levels, and you know, that's when the neighbors are quiet. Now, the power itself, uh, believe it or not, it's just AA batteries. Uh, and it's a push button, uh, capacitor, uh, it's C6 on the board, it gives an AC return path for the output signal, and power to the driver circuits are through a decoupling network of resistor and a capacitor. Now the controls, the right one is the sweep rate, uh, that's, and it's uh, FM modulated, uh, and it goes from a slow to a fast chirping rate, and it can be disabled by just, if you can, you hear the click, that's it turned off. Now the left one, this is the frequency itself, going from 10 to 25 kilohertz. Now the effects of it, uh, the sweep rates between 5 and 20 per second will cause dizziness, epileptic fits, headaches, and nausea. So when I was sitting outside, I was, I, yeah, I know, this is why I shouldn't drink. I was sitting in my chair like this, but I had it this way, and my ring finger clipped it. And I got shot right in the head. Yeah, that's <laughs> closest to Kennedy I've ever felt. And the pain, oh my God, the pain was unbelievable. And I had a headache all afternoon, but I was happy as hell, because hey, I got proof it worked, you know. <laughs> Now, uh, the sound pressure measurements uh, vary from 130 to 100 decibels at 18 inches. So, if I were to zap Leo, and I should for sleeping, <laughs> he'd be hurting. Now, well actually, you know, I would like to zap somebody, but I don't see rubble in here. <laughs> Maybe later, I don't know. Now, uh, the LAPD has a bigger unit uh, similar to this that they use for riots, you know, civil disturbances, things like that. Uh, how long have they had it for? Do you know? Yeah. Because uh, the the materials I found about this go back only maybe two, four years for the LAPD. See again, the French beat the Americans to the punch. No wonder why we get made fun of. <laughs> Now, the LAPD's units, uh, they've, they're still experimenting with it. Have some that go between 15 to 100,000 watts without overheating. They've also tested a full range device that went from 50 to 20,000 hertz.
uh, there was a report of uh, one of the people who worked on it who said that they tried a Frank Sinatra record in it and they could hear it a mile away with words. They could make up the lyrics. Why? Somebody had to do it. <laughs> you know, why not them? Now, a uh, similar device uh, was also used um, off of the coast of Somalia on a cruise ship on November 8th of last year, and there's a newspaper headline was called, The Cruise Ship Uses Sonic Weapon. It was something very similar to this. And uh, apparently pirates were trying to raid the boat, and they, you know, they caught them in time, and they got them all off of there by just blasting them with this. Hey, if it works, it works, you know. So that's it for my part. I'd like to turn things over to Dernan. His first time up, be kind to him. Dernan, they want to hear from you, man. Hi, everyone. How's, it, uh, how's everyone going? I'm a little bit nervous, first time up. Um, pretty much, uh, I'm going to change the topic a little bit. You guys like the, the whole weapons, and uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting thing within us hackers. We try to, anything with power, anything with control, we try to mod it or have, have it as a toy. So um, what I've actually managed to do, if you guys ever heard of power actuated tools, which are actually, uh, it's like a, having a full weapon without having bullets for it, but it's pretty much just like uh, the power behind a nail gun, pretty much, but a, an actual uh, gunpowder nail gun. And I've managed to actually modify the gun to create an actual automated weapon. It's kind of scary. <laughs> It's kind of scary to say. I don't want to scare you guys. But uh, I was actually going to bring it here, but I was afraid you guys might get too scared of it. Um, no, I, was, I wasn't actually going to bring the bullets or anything like that, so don't get that scared. But I was actually going to show you some presentations and how you could actually not mod it per se. I don't want to show the entire world how to do it, but I, I want to show them how, how easy it is to actually do it and what some of the companies like Hilti and uh, Ramset, which are one of the two corporations that are, are huge competitors, and they're, they're all over the US, all over Europe, and what they actually do is kind of have, they have a way of actually using their technology, their gun technology, and put it in the, putting actual consumer products for the regular Joe that you think they're not going to mod it. You think they're not going to uh, go ahead and create something new from it. So hopefully Leo gets the actual machine working, and uh, I can show you some, some screenshots. But it's pretty much, uh, it, works, it works just like a regular gun, actually. Um, you have a cylinder. You have, you have the same parts and same uh, location of a gun. It's just what they've actually managed to do, they compress the power within the, the, uh, the gunpowder and they make a smaller, a smaller load within the cartridge and they eliminate the actual bullet. So what you could do if you have the right machinery or the right tools at home, a friend, college, wherever it is, you could actually, uh, you know, take the thing apart, figure out how it actually works uh, we could also order certain parts that are meant for guns, that are not for this kind of weapon, and kind of retrofit it and create your own automatic weapon. But um, hopefully they could get it working. Um, but pretty much what you're trying to do is create an actual cavity for an actual bullet to be able to uh, fit in the actual device. Uh, they've actually made it so that the actual cavity that you have now only fits their standards and their loads. So what, you, what you're trying to do is actually, just wanted to show you guys, um, you're, you're trying to create the same, the same device, the same way it works, but you're trying to remove, it has a singular, uh, 
centrifugal case within the actual gun that it compresses the air and the power that comes out of the, the, actual, uh, the actual load. And you completely remove that part, just make it an entire empty case, and actually buy uh, uh, .27 caliber bullets. Because uh, that's what they are. They're, they're actually .27 caliber bullets, and they actually fit exactly, just exactly like the way a regular automatic gun would do, you know, like a, a revolver or a .27 caliber revolver or .22. It's so similar, it's same kind of size. But uh, I hope we can get the pictures up. Um, what is happening? What are we going to run through? Give me a second, guys. Okay, so he's actually getting everything working now. Um, what, what, what file, what's the file like that influence? How directional is that thing? Like if you aim it, you fire it. If I were to zap out of here, I would just punch and key. All right, so this is basically one of the units that they actually sell. This is the, uh, this is Ramset. It's called the Viper. Um, Americans. <laughs> um, so basically, you, you have this weapon. That's, it, it's, it's basically a weapon. It's, it's supposed to be a nail gun, but it's actually, you're, you're able, if you read some of the things on here, you're, you think it's, a, it's an actual um, machine gun. You're actually buying a machine gun. Um, so... This weapons is like the latest technologies that they've actually spent thousands of dollars just like researching how to actually prevent you from creating a full automated weapon. Um, but it's pretty much already there. <laughs> so some of the things you, you could do is actually, this one is actually free, it's sort of like free hand where you could, they have previous models where you could, you have to push into the, like they're for cement and for uh, flooring and carpeting and things like that, even for, they use it for many construction needs. But one of the things they usually prevent you, it's like from actually shooting yourself. So what, what they'll do, they'll, they'll make you, uh, it's like when a gun, when you, when you have a gun, I've actually got, used a gun before, but 
usually rock the gun to get it loaded so you can move the next load over. It's the same thing. It's you have to kind of get it ready to fire. You press it on the ground, or you press it on the actual surface that you're trying to shoot, and that's going to make the, you know that's going to load the actual the next cartridge. So they've actually eliminated that on this on this. This is the latest one that they have. They actually eliminated that, so you can actually shoot yourself in the foot if you want. So. <laughs> So basically the only thing on this, this is the latest model from, from this company. It's actually, if you guys Google it right now, we have a computer right now, it's actually RAM set. Um, pretty much the only thing you need to do is just change the way you actually put the actual loads or, or the actual uh, um, cartridge, basically the cartridge where the actual bullets go into. And that's the only thing you have to mod. You could buy the bullets and just pretty much start firing right away. <laughs> you just basically remove the actual center. It has a piece where you actually compress that air, that heat that is actually coming from the, from, you know, the gunpowder. It's actually a special gunpowder. It's, it's like it has no smoke. It's mostly powder. And it's very concentrated just because it's usually <coughs> used for cement. So, but if you buy the actual one for a the actual bullets, it's even more powerful than the one they actually provide. Um, if you go to the next slide, next slide. This is some of the cartridges that they have, and uh, this is what you basically have to modify. Um, if you see the last one, it's like they go by color. Like the first one's like the weakest one, the second one's it's a little bit, you know, a little bit stronger, and then the last one is like good, <laughs> you know. <laughs> If you go to the next slide, this is how they actually look like. It looks just like a regular bullet. Doesn't it look like a bullet, pretty much? Exactly, exactly, pretty much. Um, so if you see the tiniest one there on the picture, that's actually one of the, the strongest one, because they actually compress the, the, the chemicals and, and this gunpowder, special gunpowder, but it's still very, very powerful. Trust me, I've played around with it. It's very, very powerful. Um, if you go to the next slide. This is actually one, this is some of the documentation of one of the actual slides that they have. You could actually order the, order the parts. And you can see where the actual <laughs> bullet or load goes in. You guys see the, the, the middle there? You guys can see the, it should be number 27. Because it's like around the vicinity on 27, that's where the actual loads will go in. It's pretty much a semi-automatic. It's just like you press the trigger, the next load will go and fire. You press the trigger again, it'll fire. Next trigger, it's it's automatic gun, pretty much, but w within their own standards. Go to the next slide. This is my favorite. <laughs> you, see, you can see how complicated it is. It's actually, this is a Hilti. They're actually, it's a Swedish company. They're very, very famous for their technology, especially some of the things they've actually done are amazing. Some, like this, you could fire up to 30,000 rounds with this, with this machine without actually overheating, like without actually um, sort of burning yourself while shooting the thing. So, what they've actually done, they've actually made it so that they've changed some, some parameters where you can't really shoot yourself. This is the one I was talking about, where you, you can't really shoot yourself. But um, it's very easy, you can very easily mod the actual machine. Like I, like I wish, like I know people here, they would, they would say, man, you should just post the actual mods. But it's like, I'm really scared that a 15 year old or a 16 year old goes and buys this on the store, which you can goes to the store, buys the actual thing, and it, which only costs like $100, and you could pretty much have an automatic weapon. That's what I'm afraid of. I was actually going to go and show you guys how to actually do this, but I kind of scared myself a little bit. Um, you get the next slide. This is actually the one I was actually telling you guys. This is very, it's a very tiny um, load, but it's very powerful. It's the, the actual, every, every cartridge has a color. And this is, this is specifically for the, the last slide that I showed you, that special Hilti one. It's, 
it's what it's basically doing. This is like a special special kind. It's called the purple, the purple load. It's very very powerful. Um, I I I sort of scared the neighbors when I was playing around with this one. So. It's very, very loud. You could wake up your entire neighborhood, especially where I live. It's very, very quiet. So, you get to the next slide. This is actually some of the. If, I'm just showing you some of the. If you if you know anything about actual weapons or actual, uh, you could actually see where the trigger. That's the cylinder. That number. Number three. It's the one you actually remove, um, and basically it has a way of actually sort of once you, you hit the trigger and it actually explodes or that, that you know creates makes the load explode it will actually uh, get itself ready like automatic mode where it actually will come back to the next to the next load and start shooting and they have you guys the next slide this is the actual this is how the round looks like this is exactly what it looks like, and this is the, the purple one I was actually talking about. It is very, very powerful. Like, you could, if you could take the actual load apart and just use the powder to sort of like play around, you know, July 4, you want to do, you know, your own little chemical explosion, whatever, you could, you could, you could set it, just like put it next to anything that is, you know, heat, any kind of heat source will just like blow itself up. It's, it's just, it's very, very powerful. Uh, <laughs> Get to the next slide. This is basically the one I was saying as my favorite. You can see how rugged it is. You can see how sort of it's it's meant to to be rugged and to sustain heat and you know just like be able to actually go through cement and sort of somewhat, you know, not hurt the, the actual person's arm while you're doing it. So you can, see, you can kind of see it. I'm actually, I didn't actually, I blurred out the actual brand, so you guys, and, you know, model number. So, but it's a very, <laughs> no product placement. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> but. Expect a lawsuit. But you guys can see how it actually looks like. And. If you see this, the second, the red, the second red um, strike, it's stri like that second phase, the red. That's where actually loads go go through. It's like right next to your hand, and you could put up to ten thousand loads in, in in there, and just shoot away, just shoot away. It's scary. Next, next one. This. this Right. They, this is this is where I, that's my next point. They actually have where it's actually a circular kind of like a revolver. They have those kind of loads, but again, you have to kind of buy the actual cartridges and then replace those and put your own bullets. Um, and pretty much, you have up to you have up to to thirty thousand to from no from about three hundred loads to ten thousand loads, and within that cavity it's very very powerful so basically you can see like all the vapor and all the power behind that bullet it's pretty much was pushing you know pushing those na the nails into cement or or whatever you're, you're pretty much replacing that bullet and you're just having that power uh, you know that push to just hammer anything away and that's what they're that's what they're at that's the technology they've you know they've improved that technology of having just a simple gun and they made it so that it's a it's a tool of, of the you know a tool for, for construction but yet it's it's so powerful that if you're able to mod it and you you know how to do it and you know enough about weapons you're you could pretty much do this um, next next slide this is one other I forgot how to, I forgot to remove the brand there <laughs> But pretty much, you can see the, the entrance on the actual on the actual gun, where you could. It's basically it's one of those mountable cartridges where it's like it it, it goes. It's like ten thousand loads. Like it goes up like this. You just mount it like a like a regular 
uh, M16 or something like that. Usually M16 goes on the bottom, but this one will go on top, and it will just go, you know, it will just go one, two, three, four, like, like, you know, one after another. And on the bottom is basically where you actually store all the, all the nails, you know, all the nails or whatever you're actually putting into the cement or, you know. Next slide. Go back. Next slide. Well, it, it's the yeah the barrel. It's actually not meant for that, but it's the it's actually meant for a lot more than that because you're firing so much and you're heating up the metal every time you fire. So you're you're creating basically you're actually somewhat melting the metal every time you fire. It, it, this is a very heavy machine. It's a very heavy thing. It, it's, it's somewhat portable, but it's very heavy. It's actually one of the reasons why I didn't bring it here. So. so Pretty much, you could see what it's actually missing. You could see was actually, a, which is just the bullet itself, and you know the, the cartridge is just you know that that load that they're actually selling you. But it's pretty much you're just missing that bullet. Uh, next slide. So this is what I was talking about. You know, racking the gun. Basically, when you rack the top and you, the next load will go in. It's the same mechanism that they have. You, you, the semi-automatic, you have to sort of push it into the ground or kind of like pull it back. They usually have like a, a thing you can push it back and, and it's ready for fire. And it's pretty much just like a gun. It works exactly the same mechanism. And then once you fire, it'll go forward again and then you have to push it you know, back again. It'll go forward, it'll, you have to push it back again. It's pretty much, but an automatic, the, one that, the first slide that I showed you, it's actually just... Just hit the push, just hit. You're firing 10,000 rounds, so be careful. <laughs> Next slide. This is actually, oh, I forgot to, again, forgot to uh, remove the brand there. This, you, you guys can see how heavy this thing looks, you know, how, how even mechanical. You can see how, you know, it's, very, it's a very bulky thing. Um, Actually, grab this picture from eBay. Just let you guess. <laughs> so, but you can you can see. I mean, it should. If you go back to documentation, if you do some research and you take a look at this, you 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 could actually take the whole thing apart within two seconds. And it's like it has a cylinder, the cylinder, which which goes. It's basically the whole. You see the whole front, the whole black piece in the front actually just comes out, just pull it out, and you can see the entire gun from there, and you could play around as much as you can. Uh, I'm not gonna go into details where you, you know, where you actually play around with the gun. So, next slide. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, you guys have any questions? Wow. Uh, okay. Check? Okay. Y you keep saying it's an automatic weapon. You cock once and then you can shoot 10,000 rounds without pulling the trigger again? The first one, the first one that I showed you, the first slide, if you go back to the first slide, that one actually, you're able to do that one, just once and it's just, just what start shooting. What value does that have on the construction site? Uh, pull the trigger once it'll save, you, it'll save you time, basically. If you can read it, it's actually okay, telling you there. It's, okay. If you can read it, it'll save you time. Hey, I just had a quick question. Um, not that, I, not that I would ask you to uh, go into detail or anything, but um, do the manufacturers really have any kind of uh, obstacles they put in your way? They do. That's actually focus? one of the things that I actually wanted you guys, you guys to ask. They do have some, some things that usually you can buy the loads unless you're a certain age or you have a license in certain states. But states like Delaware, which is like uh, the one of our free states, you can buy anything you want, um, or... Florida, some states like that, they're actually, you could buy it anywhere. Even places like in Long Island, which uh, I don't want to mention, but you could buy some of the loads if it won't even ask you for ID, so. And, and what about like technical obstacles? Like is it, is it difficult to mod or? <laughs> like, um, it's actually not that difficult. Um, isn't the basic design based on not actually firing a nail that's attached to the cartridge and instead the cartridge fires a piston 
And so do you actually have to take out the piston and does the piston... You have to take out the piston, now? yes. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> You could get them, you could actually get a point twenty seven or a point twenty two, but I would suggest if you really want to play with the big big guns, big toys, go for point twenty seven. It's one fits the units? Can you repeat that? Either one fits? Uh what do you mean by fits? You you have to figure it out, like during modding, during you have to research all this stuff before you can do any of that. Don't say anything. <laughs> Next question. Okay, so you built a gun, and you now have in your possession a firearm capable of discharging 22 or 27 caliber rounds. Do you have a firearms license? Because if not, there are probably people here who want to talk to you. <laughs> Wait, have you seen? I'm actually not on the book. Have you seen that? I, I'm actually not. So it's very hard to say, you know, yeah, that guy. Yeah, so it's the only thing you know. So just to let you guys know. And have you researched the legality of. Uh, Can you repeat that? Have you researched the legality of. Uh, these devices? I haven't really shown you how to mod the actual things. I don't have it with me. In fact, that's why I actually didn't bring it. So. I don't actually own one, yes. Nudge, nudge, wink, I don't know right. what you're talking about. <laughs> That's the right answer. <laughs> oh, well, if you don't own one, then maybe you can't tell me how accurate it is. Just because, uh, you know, the, the barrel, it's, it's not a rifled barrel, I would assume. It's Again, you, could, for, you could do pretty much whatever you want. You're, 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 you could mod it to your needs. It's, let's say that. <laughs> All right. What kind of uh, what kind of range and would you say stopping power you get with this weapon? <laughs> a lion is running at you. It's a hundred yards away. You open fire. Where is it going down? I'm not going to incriminate myself. I'm not. <laughs> I was kind of impressed with the ten thousand round capability. Yeah. Um, how many rounds per minute is that? I don't, I don't know. I actually don't know. Usually they have a rating of rounds per minute, so I was just... Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> what is the approximate muzzle vo velocity? <laughs> Leo. Well, I'm going to pass it up to Leo. He's next, so it's pretty much going to close, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy the talk. So. <laughs> Neurological systems. Uh, the problem is that uh, since I lost my notes, I don't have the exact manufacturers, but I can find out with them later on. But I'll talk in more general terms. Basically, um, in '96, uh, there was a report published uh, about a guy named uh, J.R. or J.Z. I'm sorry about not being very specific. Uh, he, it was he's a guy who was uh, paralyzed and knocked down, uh, unable to move, which is the definition of paralysis. Uh, and uh, so what was done is he volunteered for an operation where uh, for, uh, nerves were taken from his kneecaps. I mean, from his knees, I should say, not his kneecaps. And uh, uh, put into these two glass cones. If I remember correctly, they were about an inch, maybe long, and uh, implanted into the back of his head. Uh, I believe that's called the neocortex area. Uh, the motor cortex, and hooked up to a PC, hooked up to, uh, uh, there was basically electrodes attached to it, which were hooked up to the mouse and put on a PC. And, for, and um, since, you, uh, since the nerve cells in his, uh, in, uh, his motor cortex were firing blindly, the mouse would just, uh, you know, violently move around the screen, but after about two months, uh, his, because he look at the screen, uh, it became a constant pattern. In other words, uh, his brain restructured itself, figured out basically how to control the mouse. So after two uh, months, he could control the, uh, uh, the mouse cursor on the monitor just by thinking about it. He, uh, so that allowed him to do a lot more motions than, um, than his... Um, just moving your head basically aloud. Uh, if you want to search for it, uh, just look for glass cones. And I think j.d. or jr. paralysis on the internet, you'll find a lot of study, uh, things referring to it. Now, in 2001, 
a company called uh, Neuro, um, uh, I mean, Cyberkinetics created something called the Neuro Motor uh, Prosthesis, which is a, uh, it's a similar device, uh, except not glass cones, but an actual uh, chip that's implanted in, into the brain and it adjusts itself to the uh, semi-random, well, random, but uh, uh, nerve firing patterns. And uh, so it basically takes what G GR, uh, what took GR two months to bit about maybe two weeks to do. And in other words, it's the same effect, but accelerated in a lot faster. And there are other companies that sell devices like a, that's like a headband, uh, that basically it's in, hooked, hooked up to an EEG, and it measures the uh, the state of the um, uh, the the frequency of your brain waves, yeah, the uh, the uh, the beta state, which is your normal waking state, the alpha state, which is the state when you close your eyes, and uh, and then you have the uh, theta state, which is sleep state, and then the delta state, which is heavy non-dreaming sleep state, and um, uh, there are variations, between, and uh, the beta state is the state with the, with the highest frequency of uh, uh, electromagnetic waves produced. And how uh, the headband device works is basically uh, in the beta state, you can, just by conscious will, you can actually alter uh, the frequency of your brain. If you hook yourself up to an EEG, it's called biofeedback, by monitoring uh, your brain waves, you can kind of gain control over uh, this, the frequency that they're coming out at. And what that headband does, basically, it, uh, what it's, uh, once you learn to control slightly the brainwave variation, you can use it as a control device, it's an input device. Uh, very simple stuff, like um, maybe three commands, because you can only have basically three states on it. It's not very sensitive, but it's, um, it's quite similar, I mean, it's, uh, uh, but it allows a small amount of input to be achieved just by wearing a headband hooked up to a, to a PC. Uh, what else, what else, what else? There's uh, some other stuff that I was gonna mention. Uh, basically, uh, uh, when, uh, if you take a scorpion, for example, and, uh, and uh, into its spine, what, what, an, a living scorpion, uh, take electrodes, put into its spine, I don't remember the exact areas, but, uh, uh, and you hook it up to, let's say, a tape recorder. Hit record and make the uh, scorpion run around, you know, like poke him, make him do some motions. And then hit stop, gas the scorpion so he dies without any bodily damage. I mean, other than suffocation. Uh, and quickly play, <laughs> play back the, uh, the recording uh, before, the. The nerve cells will, the brain, in the brain and the spine will start dying after about like 30 seconds. But if you play it back before that time, the, uh, the scorpion will repeat the motions. Because what's basically happening is the electrical impulses that were being sent before are getting resent to the spine, and the spine uh, routes them in the you know, proper directions. Uh, so you're thinking, like, you know, why not apply that to humans? And it's been applied uh, where there's a, a belt that you can wear. Well, if you're paralyzed, basically, uh, where uh, let's say you have a like your spinal cord is semi severed, let's say over here, so the part of the spinal cord that's still attached to the brain has electrodes implanted into it. Uh, each wire is called a channel, and basically, there's I think they're using I think it was 200 channels uh, to attach the top part of the spine to the bottom part, the part that's. Uh, there after the uh, the separation, and so it relays the electrical si signals from the top of the spine to the bottom part, and allowing a person who's paralyzed, for example, from the waist down, to walk, not for long, uh, but uh, the record, if I remember correctly, is about a thousand steps, which for somebody who can't really walk at all, otherwise, uh, is a pretty good record. The problem with that is when you uh, plug things into your spine, it um, kind of kills your nerves. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but uh, I wish I could find the article. I was looking for it as, I was kind of late because I was looking for this article 
uh, I believe last year, sinus found some way to uh, keep cell nerve cells that, uh, like, if you take a nerve cell and attach it to a silicon chip, well, to, to silicon, it, uh, it would basically uh, die after about a few hours. They discovered a way to keep them alive. Uh, and I don't remember the specifics, so I was kind of disappointed that I couldn't find it in time. But that discovery is probably going to lead to a lot more um, uh, improvements in the technology like the spinal one. And the thing I was saying before, the glass cones, uh, uh, because it, um, you know, will prevent you from getting nerve damage. Uh, that's it. Sorry for the generalization. If you see me around during the conference, I'll have better, more thorough, uh, specific preferences for you guys. Uh, so uh, that's it. Yeah. So questions I can take. Any other questions? Yes, I have a question. Mm -hmm. It sounds to me like uh, they're talking about a central path to communicate to the brain uh, via the vagus nerve or something like that. I know uh, epileptics have an implant to send a signal. And it, it almost looks like it's the path has sort of been found. It's what signal to send? Is that your sense of what's happening? Uh, my sense was just uh, not what signal to send, well, uh, but to send all the signals. So basically, r since we can grow nerve cells, well, we can, but not in large amounts currently, and we can grow spinal nerve cells yet, uh, just to make an electrical, electrical relay system for the electrical signals of the uh, nerves. The problem is, uh, since there's um, millions of nerves and uh, only 200 channels. That's why it doesn't wor work very well. But it, but it does work enough that you can walk around for a bit. But yeah, that's what it's, it's basically not what signals to carry, but to carry all possible signals. That's the goal, I believe. Any more questions? No. Not at all. I guess I've bored you long enough. <laughs> okay, so uh, have a great conference. Before you duck out, I'll...